with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything that I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Baseball and softball season has begun, and the little leaguers are out there practicing in the field, getting ready for the big game. But as much as the kids are getting ready, the parents need to get ready as well. In fact, usually the kids are all right. They're out there having a great time. It's the parents who need more practice about what the game is all about. And uh, things have gotten awful, awful bad sometimes at Little League games, where parents are uh, yelling at coaches and heckling the umpires. So bad that Little League Baseball has recently had to put up a web page on their web website to uh, clarify some of the rules around for parents so, so they understand. One umpire says, I find that more often than not, the reason why parents get up so upset is they actually misunderstand what the rules are. They're ignorant about the rules. And so the website clarifies some of the rules, like does a runner need to slide into home plate? No. Does a batter have to avoid getting hit by a pitch? Yes. Are the hands part of the bat? No. These, it's good to clarify these rules. And if you're sitting there as a parent saying, Father Matt, you don't know what you're talking about. Those aren't the rules. Well, stop heckling me. I, I haven't played Little League Baseball in a long time. That's just what I read in the newspaper this week. Jesus today says that if we are going to remain in his love, we have to keep his commandments. We have to keep his rules. But do we even know what the rules are? When we hear commandments, we probably think of the Ten Commandments first. And that's certainly a, a great foundation, an essential foundation to the Christian life. We've got to get those ten biggest areas of our life right before God. We have to keep holy the Sabbath day. We have to honor our father and mother, put God first in everything. Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. I mean, these are certainly basic things we need to do if we're going to be living the Christian life. But I don't think Jesus is just talking about the Ten Commandments here. Are there other commandments? Are there other rules that we're not aware of? Many people seem to think so. Ask your average person on the street and they probably say, don't, don't you Catholics have rules about everything? And we probably do. Rules are not that bad all the time. Uh, rules are good. They, they keep things fair. They keep things fun. They keep things on track. And it's good to know the rules. The rules are a sure guide in life how to live your life, and they show us the way so often. I love your law, O oh Lord. It shows me the way. But the law can only bring you so far, because a rule can't cover every possible situation. A, 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 sometimes we, we have these almost contradictory rules. What, do I, what am I supposed to do here? It's confusing. Life is messy. It's hard. And I find there's often just as many misconceptions about the rules of the church as there are about the rules of Little League Baseball. Things like, uh, you have to be Catholic in order to go to heaven. No. You have to uh, believe that the, Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist and not just as a symbol. Yes. If you're divorced, you can't go to church anymore. No. I, that last one, I, I can't tell you how many times I meet people who, uh, you know, maybe 30, 40 years ago, they were divorced and they never went to church again because someone took it upon themselves to say this is the rule when it wasn't. Now, certainly the church does have rules about things and says, well, if you are divorced, you can't just get, go get married again without resolving that in some way. So if that's your situation, come talk to me. But keep coming to church because God wants you here. 
You have to know what the rules of the game are. But all of these rules, it really is just getting us into the weeds. This is not what it's all about. A wise Catholic certainly understands the rules are good, they help us, but the rules are not what the Christian life is all about. They help us to live the Christian life. When Jesus says, follow my commands, he's really talking about that command that he gives us today. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Unless we have love in our hearts, it doesn't do any good to, to do all the other commandments, to know all the rules, to follow them perfectly. Without love, we are nothing. Jesus today tells, shows us what, all, what underlies all these rules, what it's all really about. Love one another as I have loved you. A great baseball player out in the field who has the ball in his hands I don't think he's out there in the field saying, now what do the rules tell me about this situation? I mean, what, what, what are my various options here according to the rules? No, a great baseball player scoops up the ball and throws it to the correct base because he's practiced things in his life. It's in him. He knows what to do. He knows what the game is all about and where it's going. So it is with someone who follows the command of the Lord to love one another as I have loved you. If we get that in our lives right, we kind of automatically just kind of follow all the other rules and commandments because that's what it's all about. One great saint said, love and then do what you will. He didn't say do whatever you want. He said love and then do what you will. When we have the love in our hearts, love for God and love for others, then we got it right. And I think simultaneously, this is the easiest and the hardest thing that Jesus ever said to us. The easiest because it's just one commandment to remember. It's not even ten. One, love one another as I have loved you. But it's also the hardest thing because he says love. And love is hard. It's difficult to love. It's difficult to love someone who doesn't love us. It's difficult to love someone who's different than us. It's difficult to figure out sometimes in all the messy situations of life what is actually the loving thing to do in this situation. That's what St. Peter was trying to figure out after he met this man, Cornelius, who was a Roman centurion. He was a Gentile. Uh, he was someone that, you know, St. Peter would not normally have met. And he was trying to figure out, what do I do? Because the rules tell me here I should not enter into his house. I should not enter into the house of a pagan. But St. Peter had to think about it. He had to pray about it. And he had a bit of a revelation from God of what to do that said, no, go into his house and love him. Befriend him, share Jesus with him. And, you know, Peter had to kind of give up a little bit his own ego about being a, a, a righteous keeper of the law. He had to do something that looked a little bit like rule breaking in order to truly love Cornelius in that situation. He had to give up his reputation with others. A lot of people criticized him for doing this. But he said, no, I, got, I have to love as Jesus taught me to love. I have to not be afraid to be associated with Jesus, who was not afraid to be associated with lawbreakers, with criminals, who was crucified with all the other criminals outside the walls. Love one another as I love, Jesus says. That's a tall order because we see how much Jesus loves. No one has greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. Today, Jesus calls us his friends. How do we figure out how to love well, the great confirmation that Peter did the right thing was that the Holy Spirit came down upon that place, came down upon Cornelius and the family, and filled that whole household with joy. Joy is the infallible sign of the Holy Spirit's presence. If you stay in the joy, you're doing the right thing. Jesus today, and what, but you have to know what real joy is. It's not momentary pleasure. It's not momentary happiness. It's the joy. It's that deep, abiding sense of God's favor that endures even through difficult times. Jesus today says, I tell you all this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. I've said this before, but I was once visiting the home of an elderly woman and as I was getting ready to leave, she pointed up to her mantelpiece and said, you see that up there? And I looked up and she had these three candles on the mantelpiece that were in the shape of letters. And they spelled J-O-Y. And I said, well, I, I, I do. And she said, do you know what that means? And I said, well, I think that spells joy. And she says, yes, but do you know how you get joy? And I said, well, this seems like a rather joyful woman. So I asked her, how do you get joy? 
Very easy, she said. You just got to remember one thing, J-O-Y. You want joy in your life, you got to put Jesus first, J, others second, O, and yourself third, Y. Jesus, others, yourself, J-O-Y. There's a rule, rule worth living. 